God is a good God. How many people believe that this is the Word of God? How many people believe it's truth? How many people agree with what it says in here? Amen? You excited about the Word of God today? I've got a lot of stuff here I want to share and uh, I'm just going to take on uh, over from where I left off the other day and we we're talking about, uh, you, know, the, you know, Satan has tried to stop uh, God from having a family and old hairy legs comes in to try to stop God's plan for mankind. You know, I believe God's plan for mankind is that we would live victorious, that we would live above, that we would be healed, we'd be delivered, we'd be totally set free. And that we would know joy, we'd know life, we'd know victory. And of course the enemy comes in and he starts messing it up. And, and uh, people now get confused. They, they don't know what's right, they don't know what's wrong. They hear so much stuff today that, that where, the, where the Word of God is diluted to a point where we don't really know what's faith, what's, what to believe in. I was talking in tongues a little while ago. A lot of pastors today say don't do that in church. You might offend somebody. Well, if you're offended, praise God. Uh, I, I didn't mean to offend you, but I'd rather offend you than God. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> but, uh, because I love you very, very much, and I know that you love me too. And uh, yeah, but, but God is very, very real, and, and the Word of God is very, very real. And it's been inspired by, by God to, for us to be able to glean from it and, and, and find out God's purpose and God's plan for, for mankind. And, and I was sharing the other week that, uh, you know, that the devil comes in in Genesis 3 uh, to come in to steal uh, th that relationship that man had with God. And man, we, we realize, was hiding from God. It tells us in Romans 5.17... That it's what I'm sharing here is that because of one man's sin, death reigned through that one. Therefore, if by one man's offence, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. You know, the real secret in Christianity, I believe, and, and the Word of God and and what God's plan for man is, is for our ability to be able to receive what God really has for us. And I believe that we've lost the ability to receive. We've lost the ability. See, Jesus came to his disciples and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And he breathed on them. And some came into their lives and today there's so much there in the Word of God that God has for us that He wants you and I to receive but because of our mind you know the battlefield of the mind and man today thinks I'm not worthy I'm not good enough I've done something this or that that stops me from the love of God Friend, the Bible says, what shall separate us from the love of God? And it goes through height and length and breadth and depth and all those sort of things. And what it's saying is there's nothing that really can separate us from the love of God. Sure, we might have, we're not perfect yet. You might have noticed that. But God, God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And God is love and so God is perfect love. And today I believe that God wants us to be able to receive and he's talking here, he says, if through one man's offence, death reigned through the one, how much more will we re that can receive this truth will receive the abundance of grace, the abundance of mercy. And, and to, today we can stand before God I thank God today that it's through the precious blood and being able to receive what God has done for me today that I can stand here in the presence of God and lift up my heart to God and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And it's very, very simple. But there are many today like, the, like Adam and Eve, when God came down in the cool of the evening, it says that they hid themselves. But that man's offence brought that upon those people. But through one man's righteous act, I believe grace reigns today. The Bible says God's word will not return to him void. 
We, we really believe that this book is the inspired Word of God. Amen. God wrote this book. It's our, a love letter to us. Amen. It's, a, it's not a book of, of you know, do's and don'ts. It's a book of if you can receive God's mercy and grace, you will become what God says you will become. And I believe that the church has got a long way to go. God wants us to become strong and mighty. He wants us to stand an exceeding great army. He wants us to triumph over every work of the devil, amen. Every work of the devil, not just some, but every work of the devil. And and I believe that God is training us. God is training His church. He's raising up a people, I believe, all over the world. There are people that that are coming under the influence of the Holy Spirit, that are hearing the voice of God loud and clear. And I believe that the voice of God really is rise up, you people of power. But you might say, but I'm not powerful. I, no, rise up, you people of power. Rise up, arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Can you receive the glory of God that God has poured out upon His church? See, we've got to be able to receive it. And you know, when we say things like that, a lot of things come into our mind and into our thinking why this won't happen. But I want to tell you, I want to tell you why it will happen. I I believe that this book is the inspired Word of God. God used different authors to tell us and instruct us regarding His plan for mankind. How many people know that from the beginning of time, God had a plan for mankind? How many people realize that God had a plan for your life? Come on. For your life, personally. Who gets in there to try to stop it? Old Hairy Legs. Hairy Legs gets in there and he will find lots of helpers. Anybody found out that Hairy Legs has no problems getting helpers? Hey? Hey, come on. That's true. Is that true? He's got lots of little helpers that get in there, nibble, 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 and cause us to get discouraged, disappointed, or whatever it might be. But I believe that in this book are the instructions for mankind. Hidden in these pages are the mysteries, the truths that have been, I believe, spiritually, you know, in our lives. God wants to impart them into our lives. Ephesians uh, uh, 1 verse 9 says this, it says, having made known to us the mysteries of His will. There's mysteries of His will that God wants to bring to our attention. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 says this, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. I think that's an amazing scripture. Verse four says, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. The truth that's in this book will set you free. The truth that's in this book. Today, there are many voices, many opinions, and many, many different manifestations. Cyril went to a conference on the, week, uh, on the weekend and the Spirit of God came down. I want to tell you, friends, something there that we need to think of as a church is to get away for four or five days and have a conference somewhere. Have a camp meeting or something like that and allow the concentrated power of God, the presence of God to get around our lives where we can just be in that because something builds in that atmosphere and the presence of God can get in. We come for sometimes for an hour, an hour and a half on a Sunday morning. Uh, but you know, friend, sometimes that's not enough to get a breakthrough, Amen. How many people would like to do something like that? Three of us, five of us, so we can do that. That's enough. (laughs) But two or three are gathered. I'm in the midst. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you today to help us. Help us find you in in reality. Help us find who we are. Lord, let us search the amazing truth that is in this book. Lord, what you've spoken about us, what we can do and how we can do it. 
Father, we take authority over every lie of the devil that's impacted people's lives. Lord, this caused them to, the Lord, to, to, to fall short. But my God, I'm praying for a mighty rising up of your people, Father, as the Spirit of God comes upon us and lifts us up where we belong in Jesus' name. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. I want you to have a quick look with me in the book of Romans. And uh, we're just going to read from uh, Acts chap- Romans chapter 12. I'm in Acts, but looking for Romans. <laughs> I think we all know these verses of Scripture pretty well off by heart, but they're, they're great verses of Scripture. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God." that we may be able to prove not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Friend, can I say this? I I believe in the church today, there are a lot of fads. There are a lot of things. Don't go after fads, go after God. Let's go after God. Let's, let's seek Him while, we can, while He's yet to be found. Let's, let's go after God. Don't go after fa- fads. Go after God through Jesus Christ. What is God's plan for mankind? What is God's plan for the church? This is a very, very interesting uh, verse of Scripture that I want to read to you today. It's found in Psalm 110, verse 1. This, I believe, is where God's plan for man, as as He started to speak, this is God himself speaking to his son. This is a conversation that God had with his son. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it, will he not bring it to pass? This word of God is the inspired word of God. It contains mysteries. I believe that that it, it will show us Things And here is God speaking to His Son. And I, I believe that we need revelation. We need understanding on these verses of Scripture. And this is what it says. God speaking directly to His Son. The Lord God said to my Lord Jesus, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstools. King James says, a footstool for your feet. God the Father, I believe, is set upon making Christ's enemies a footstool to His feet. We've got to realise today that God wants to make all of Christ's enemies a footstool to His feet. And what you've got to realise here in this verse of Scripture that God is speaking to His Son and He's saying this to His Son, Son, this is what's going to happen. You're going to go down to earth. You're going to be tried. You're going to be, you're going to be rejected. You're going to be despised. But you're going down there as a mighty warrior to win the greatest battle that will ever be fought on planet earth. The redemption of mankind to break the curse, to break the stronghold that the enemy has over humanity. You're going to do something down there that will make a way for mankind to triumph over the enemy. And he said, son, I want you then to come up and sit with me upon my throne. Sit with me on my right hand. Now, you've got to realise this. Jesus is seating, seated at his right hand. And he said, then I'm going to really send the Holy Spirit down to planet Earth who is going to raise up your body. I want to say this very, very plain. We are the body of Christ today. Do you believe that today? I'm going to send the Holy Spirit down on this planet And He is going to raise up your body. And this mighty army 
is going to destroy every work of the enemy until they will present him to you as a footstool. Friend, that's what God wants for you and me. Amen? God wants that for you and me. The other day while I was sitting at my office and, and I was writing down some things and, and I wrote it this way and I want you to uh, just say it so I can have... This was after the resurrection, after Jesus said it was finished. Just let me say it this way. This is what God said to His Son. I will resurrect you, bringing you through all eternity to seat you next to me on my throne. The Holy Spirit will raise up a mighty army of believers. How many people want to be part of that mighty army of believers? That will become your body. These living on earth will become as your feet. That will crush Satan under their feet. Amen. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? That is an amazing thing. I'd like you to have a look at Romans 16 with me. And I'm reading, read verse 20. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And the God of peace. And this is what I want to share a little bit today is that we can get so caught up in gentle Jesus, meek and mild. We can get so caught up as the church of turning the other cheek. If somebody asks you for your shirt, give him your coat as well. Friend, I want to tell you, that sort of thinking, though there's a, there's a truth in there, but I want to tell you, if somebody said to you, I'm going to take your wife, and you're just going to say, well, take my children as well. Or are you going to fight for what is rightfully yours? There are some things, material things there that aren't important. But I want to tell you, friends, when you take that material things over into the spiritual side of things, that is wrong. I want to tell you, God wants you to be raised up as a mighty army. And He's talking in the spiritual realm here. And the God of peace who says, turn the other cheek or whatever it might be. But I want you to know that He is going to cause an army to crush the devil under our feet. Amen. We can get so confused as to what to do that we accept what the enemy is putting on us and under some spiritual sort of thing. But I want to tell you, friends, it's time to rise up and speak bold with authority and tell the devil that he is a liar and a thief and a cheat and he's not going to steal from you. But the Bible says whatever he has stolen in the past, he's going to have to repay it seven times. Amen. If you don't know what is yours, you will not accept it. You won't take it on. And the God of peace, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. I, I believe that God is going to raise up a mighty army, an army of believers a people there that know their God. The God of peace will crush them. I want to just read from Ephesians. The Ephesians are some of my favorite scriptures. And, and, and I believe it's, there's so much mystery. There's so much truth that we have not really comprehended yet, even though we, 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 we think we do, but I believe that there's so much more, amen. Is it okay to say that? There's so much more. God wants to raise up a mighty army. And, and I'm just going to read from verse uh, uh, 18 if I can. It says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. I was talking before, it's our understanding, it's our brain, it's our knowledge, it's what we think. And I believe that God, there's some things there that we think we understand and, and we've sort of built a, a, a life around some of these things. But God wants to bring revelation to some of that stuff because it's, it holds us down at times. 
It holds us back because we're trying to be so nice to everybody. Friend, I tell you what, you cannot be nice to the devil, amen. You can't be nice to spiritual forces that are coming to attack your family. You can't be nice to sickness and disease. You can't be nice to poverty. You've got to rise up and you've got to speak loud and strong and, and tell it where to go and, and get rid of the stupid thing, amen. So that's what God has for us. That's what God wants for us. And, and it says the eyes of your understanding. Father, help us, help us to enlighten us that you might know what is the hope of His calling and what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. In other words, He's saying, you've got a thought, you've got a thinking, you've got a way that you live and that way that you're living at the moment is not really helping you to overcome and to triumph. But I want you to know that I want you to see something that's even greater and more powerful. Your understanding needs enlightening. And if you, when you get this enlightening, that then you might know what is the hope of His calling and what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us. And I said it a week ago and I'll say it a week before that and I'll say it a week before that and I'll say it again and again and again. Right now, His power is stretched out towards us and we've got to be able to receive it. And if we get, have wrong thoughts and wrong understandings and wrong concepts in our mind, when God wants to pour out His love upon us and shower us with His mercy and His grace and whatever it might be there, we sort of hide from Him or we reject Him. Friend, we've got to somehow or other say, God, bring it on. God, smash the strongholds in my mind that are not of you, God. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. My God, I want to know what is this exceeding greatness of His power that is stretched out towards me. I want to be endured with power from on high because that's what Jesus said. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you will be endured. You'll be filled with the Holy Spirit power, amen. Not to walk around like a pussycat, not to walk around, you know, but to walk around strong and tall and, 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 and declare the goodness of God, amen. The mercy of God, the power of God. The victory of the cross. The victory of the cross. I, I've heard so many people say to, to me and, 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 and they say, Neil, you, you're talking here, but it was all done at the cross. Friend, it was all done at the cross. I guarantee that is true. But why are there so many weak and sick among us? Because we haven't comprehended properly the truth. Yes, it was all done at the cross. So we just leave it at the cross. No, we've got to be able to receive what was done at the cross. We've got to apply it to ourselves. We've got to put it on, amen. Amen. We gotta put on the victory. We gotta put on the anointing. We gotta put on what God has given to us. What an amazing verses of scripture. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us? Who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places? far above principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And listen to verse 22. <clears throat> and He <clears throat> put all things under His feet. Hallelujah. You believe that today? And He put all things under His feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Friend, the church is the, supposed to be the fullness of God. He gave Jesus to be head over the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, amen. And He's going to put all things under our feet, amen. Until we can present it to Jesus as a footstool, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that makes me excited. 
It's okay to get excited in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> Put all things under his feet. Let me read it again. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand. This is the fulfillment of the word of God that God spoke to his son. My son. When he spoke to him, my Lord said to my Lord. God spoke to his son and he said, son, this is what I'm gonna do. This is the fulfillment of that scripture that I read to you before which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. How, how, I don't know about you, but that, that sounds like victory to me. Yeah. Hey? Does that sound a little bit like victory to you? Far above what? <laughs> far, far above what? Everything. You see... Your problem is spiritual. Amen? It's a devil that doesn't want you to know who you are. The problem is spiritual. And if we can somehow or other break free, break out of ourselves, is that okay? You might see me do some stupid things, and I will, okay? Because, because that thing called inferiority, shyness, always tries to get a hold of me. And there's only one way I can break it. <laughs> Is to do something that will break it, amen. I don't want to nurse it. I don't want to rehearse it. I don't want to pamper it. I want to smash it. And that's why today I was encouraging you. You can be dancing in your shoes. Your toes can be doing a watuzi in there and nobody would even know they're doing a minor going like, you know. But I want to tell you, you've got to break out, amen. You've got to break. So I... I admire you today. I'm going to run around. I love that. Amen. I love that. Amen. We've got to break out. Turn to somebody and say, break out. Shut your, shut your eyes with me for a moment. How many people here suffer with inferiority? Lift up your hands. Shaka bundi. Put them down. Oh, no. I need the brush cutter. <laughs> Well, how are you going to break out of it? I don't know. You've got to break out of it. <laughs> you've got to jump. You've got to do something. Amen. Nancy's not here. I'm thinking of buying a motorbike. <laughs> but, by the way, oh, no. Where did you come from? Where did you come from? See, scared. <laughs> By the way, I sold the boat. <laughs> oh, glory to God. What is the ex <laughs> Oh, far above principalities and powers and... Look, just look, far above shyness and all those things. Principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things of the church with his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. Uh, Luke, just have a quick look with, at Luke. Luke chapter 10. Anybody getting anything out of this? I mightn't be doing it too good, but anyhow, I'm having fun. <laughs> Luke chapter uh, 10, verse 18. This is after the 70 came back. And he said to them, 
I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Then he said this, behold, I give you. Everybody say you. you. Give me a hand, if you, put up your hand if you're a you. Come on, give a, a, give a big wave if you're a you. Is, 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 is this talking about you? <laughs> Come on, give me a wave if you're talking about you. Come on, I want, I want to see this. Okay. And I give you. Remember, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? Will he not? I, and this is what he said. I give you the authority. Everybody say authority. authority. I love that word. Do you love that word? What does authority mean? What does authority mean? Power. This young man said, I am a man under authority. I say go and they go. I say come and they come. <laughs> authority. If only the church could get that into us. I give you authority to go and play church and to lay down and get defeated and to feel sorry for yourself and to say, there's no way I could ever do this. I give you authority. And here's this word again, trample under our feet, amen? God said to my God, God said to my Lord, I am going to make your enemies a footstool under your feet. Behold, I give you authority. This is a church to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all. Everybody say all. In the Greek, that word means all. In the Hebrew, it means all. In French, it means all. In German, it means all. I don't care what, it, it means all, amen? You can't do too much with three letters. <laughs> And over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hallelujah. Come on, rejoice today if your name's written in heaven. Rejoice greatly, church. Rejoice. The devils are subject to us, but my God, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. God made a way. He opened a way and I walk all the way through it. Friend, I want to tell you, you have to walk through some things. If you've got shyness and I was one of the shyest kids on the street, but I had to walk right through it. God made a way for you and I to walk right through everything that the enemy would put in your face. You walk on through it. Hallelujah. I will jump. I will shout. I will spit. I will dance. I will do whatever it takes, but I will never never allow the enemy to bring me into jail, into bondage again, because I have overcome that thing through Jesus Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. I am a new creation. I am a brand new man. All things are passed away. I've been born again. Hallelujah. Come on, friends. We, we're going to see some things happen. They're going to happen. Hallelujah. And it only happened, you say, well, God, it was all done at the cross. And when you're ready, you can do it. <laughs> when you're ready, Lord, you can, come on. That's wrong thinking. Amen? God is ever ready. <laughs> He's always ready. Thank God He's always ready, amen, to save us, to deliver us, to set us free. Sin, my, amazing things happen. But God is on the throne. He is there and He's doing it. Praise God in Jesus' name. Last week, I also shared a little bit about Samson. Don't play with the enemy. 
And Samson lost his power because he told the secret of his locks. We told you the other last week or whenever it was that it wasn't the power in his hair, but it was the power in who he was and his relationship with God. He was a Nazarite. He, was, he was, uh, uh, had a call of God on his life. Friend, I want to tell you the church has got a call on it. There's a call of God on the church, amen. And we can go if we want one way or we can go another way. But I don't know about you, but I want to go God's way. I want to find God. I want to find the power of God. I want to find the anointing. I want to find it in a greater measure. Yes, we've seen great things, but I want to tell you, I believe that there's more. There's so much more. Amen. Do you believe that? There's so much more for us to, 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 to get a hold of. And Samson, there, here he was. And all of a sudden, after he'd been blinded and, 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 and all that that had happened to him, but something started to happen to him again and his strength began to come back into his life. The strength started to come in. And friend, I want to tell you, I believe that the end time church is going to be like a picture of Samson. Though we've been blinded, though the church has been led astray and, and led by every wind of doctrine and everything like that, but God is going to raise up a church again and they're going to start to sense a, the, a new fire in their bellies. I don't know about you, is anybody else feeling a new fire beginning to burn in your belly? Come on. And, and you're going to start to stir that thing and stir it. And I believe that Samson and was there and that power he could sense the power of God again and he started to cry out to his God friend I want to tell you it's time for the church to cry out to God again God send down your power God send down your anointing fire again God fill us again with the fire with the anointing with the victory with the purpose with the plan uh, help us to understand who we are Start to cry out. And Samson, as the Bible says, began to cry out to his God. He began to cry out to his God. And he went over there and he grabbed that pillar and he started to pull on that pillar. And the thing came down. And it says that he destroyed more in the last day of his life than he did in the hold. Oh, Jesus. It's time for the church to stop playing church and become the church and start crying out to God. Yeah. Crying out to God. It's a cry going out to God. Something going out to God. We want to see a moving. God, whatever it takes. God, we want to see a move of your spirit. We want a spirit. Church must cry out again. And I believe Samson, as he cried out, Oh God, remember me. I want to cry out today, God, remember your church, your body. Remember your church, your body. Strengthen us, Lord. Would you raise your hands with me and pray this prayer? Strengthen us, Lord. Raise up your people. Fill us with your spirit to overflowing in Jesus' name. And Father, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory and all the victory and, and we will present to you, my God, every enemy as a footstool. Marvel not that your names, marvel not that the devils are subject to you, but marvel that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on us. Why don't we just stand to our feet? I believe it's a time of restoration. We saw a, a revival over in South America. And the, uh, they had a great revival with fruit and vegetables and Everything there was just an abundance. It was like a, the ground was, was delivered and restored. But friend, I want the church to be restored. I want the church to be restored, amen, to its glory. We are the church. We are his people. Do you believe that today? We are his church. We are his people.